Hi Eco Adventurers, my name is Kristen Glass and today we're going to talk about radio telemetry. The term telemetry means to measure from a distance. In this case, what is being measured are the movements of designated or tagged animals. In fact, Radio telemetry, which became popularized in the mid-1960s, was the first real-time method of tracking wildlife. This type of biotelemetry relies on the communication of information between an active transmitter device and a remote receiver equipped with a mounted or handheld antenna. The transmitter emits pulsed electromagnetic energy in the form of an omnidirectional radio frequency, usually in the very high frequency range, between 30 and 300 megahertz. This is why this form of telemetry is also called VHF tracking. In order to track an animal using this technology, it must first be outfitted with a transmitter. There are VHF transmitters for every animal of every different size. Once an animal has been captured, the general rule of thumb is that the transmitter should be attached as close or streamlined to the animal's body as possible. The transmitter can also not weigh more than 3% to 5% of the animal's total body weight, as to not impede the animal or cause excessive energy loss. Some different methods of attachment include neck collars or ear tags for most mammals, tail mounts or ankle tags for most birds, or pendant-like neck packs for some larger birds, adhesive transmitters for many insects and reptiles, like turtles who can have them glued to their carapaces, or for mammals such as bats, backpack harnesses, which can be used on a wide variety of animals, and implantable transmitters for animals with not well-defined necks like snakes, that have sensitive skin like amphibians or fish, as well as animals that may have restricted movement from an external device like burrowing animals. Although, there is a much higher risk of infection with this method because of the surgical procedure and resulting opening in the skin. Each of these methods would make it so that the power source and the electronic transmitter are close to the body, while the transmitting antenna is either coiled or trails behind. The larger and longer the antenna, the better it will be at transmitting signals over greater distances but it's important to make sure that the antenna, as well as the device, do not inhibit or distract the animal. Once the transmitter is attached and the animal is released, the signals given off can be detected during ground, water, or aerial surveys, depending on what the subject animal is. The location of the animal can be determined in one of three ways. There is presence or absence, in which researchers simply determine if the desired frequency is nearby. There is triangulation, in which researchers take readings from multiple locations or angles and are then able to estimate the animal's location. Finally, there is homing, in which a researcher determines an animal's precise location by using a pinging receiver to lead them straight to the animal. So how is this important to the field of conservation? This type of technology provides wildlife biologists, ecologists, and field researchers with information on the environmental, behavioral, and physiological aspects of a subject that could not be accurately determined through direct observation or of behaviors that may be changed because of human presence. The data collected can help researchers to determine many aspects of spatial ecology. Knowing this type of information can lead to more effective conservation and management efforts. In my own personal experiences, I've had the chance to see and use radio telemetry on a few occasions. As an intern at the Riverhead Foundation for Marine Research and Preservation, I assisted in attaching transmitters to sea turtles and harbor seals, which would be used to determine migration patterns and habitat usage. During my study abroad in Kenya and Tanzania, I spoke with field biologists using radio telemetry to study lions, their home ranges, as well as their different pride interactions. And finally, during my internship at the Environmental Protection Department of Brookhaven National Lab, I used radio telemetry to gather data on the home ranges of the endangered eastern box turtle, as well as discover their nesting sites. Although newer technology surpassed the capabilities of radio telemetry, this technique is still in use because of its numerous benefits and constant improvements. It can be used on virtually any animal for a relatively low cost and is excellent for studying a large sampling of animals for an extended period of time. Radio telemetry's wide variety of analysis techniques and long history of use allow for a wealth of information to be compared and expanded upon. The downside to radio telemetry is probably first and foremost the power to size ratio. The smaller and lighter a unit is, the shorter its lifespan. 
This means that the animal you are tracking will have to be recaptured for its transmitter's batteries to be replaced. Similarly, signal strength will determine the range at which a signal can be received, but increased strength will require larger batteries and therefore need to be heavier. Another disadvantage of radio telemetry is that it's very time, labor, and transportation intensive for researchers. Many of radio telemetry's other weaknesses are really just possible or probable weaknesses. We can assume that a transmitter or a tag will affect an animal's behavior, but hopefully not acutely. Additionally, this technique has the potential to modify or change an animal's normal behavior, not only because of the device itself, but because of the need for capture and recapture, which can be a very stressful experience. All possible steps should be taken to minimize the time and the stress of the capture. It is also important to note that some transmitters may cause an animal discomfort or cause them to groom aggressively. This is why, once an animal has been tagged, its behaviors and physical health must be observed and evaluated upon every recapture. If this is done, researchers are able to monitor and maintain the health of the subject. Like any other research that involves wild animal interference or capture, public opinion must be taken into consideration. Many people will find the sight of a wild animal with a human device on it disturbing or jarring. This is why public outreach and education of the importance of radio telemetry is an invaluable part of the research process. So share this video with someone you think needs to know a little bit more about radio telemetry. And let me know in the comments below if you think the data collected during radio telemetry studies is worth it for both animals and humans. Until next time, thanks for watching.